We built all of the UI. Next up, let's tackle the data. So if this was my bubble task here, I have handled the input screens and the conditionals in the navigation. Now it's time to handle the data. So we're going to hold uh, answers to the questions. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and add a type for, let's see, Yep, so a question. And then I want to have on the user record, I'd want to, so there's definitely another app going on in here. But uh, this user would also have these questions tied to them. And that would be a list of them. And then in this question, we're just going to have the question response as a piece of text. And then in the special case of the add specificity, we have user interface as texts. We have data as text. And finally, workflow. Cool, so most of them will just use this one, but then the other one will use the other one. So that way we can have a person that, um, oh yeah, we'll also have the name. Name and number. So we'll just order it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five. Cool, all right, so. Here on session goals, let's go and so now we're working through here. We're going to display them a list of data to hold that. So we just push that all in the one type, and then a query string variable for the navigation, a state variable to count the number of fill in the blanks, the input form. I shied away from that for the purpose of this video, uh, just to save on uh, space and time, and then that way I can just uh, push this out for now. And then um, this this will be available to have a look at and play with um, in the link in this video. Oh, okay, looks like that one needs to be updated. All right. So let's work on our workflows. Again, if we go back to here, this is it's so great to have a written thing because I don't have to keep all of this stuff, you know, running in uh, in your working memory. It's all just here telling you what your next step is because you planned it out so nicely. Congratulate yourself on that. So uh I were to save the data to the database after input it. So let me do that. So let's pretend that I, I guess I'll probably go and um, I'll go and make a user. So new entry. And we're just going to make this one called um, checklist test at test.com. Cool, cool. 
All right, so we're running it as that user. And when we save things, it'll tie, we'll tie it to, we'll create things and we'll tie them to the user records. So what do we want to create here? Well, when we start this, what we want to have happen. So we're going to label these because there's going to be a lot of them. Button, step one, and continue. And step four. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do here on this step one continue is I'm going to create a new thing. I'm going to create a new question. And for the name of the question, I'm going to say that it is, I'm just going to hard code this one. So this one is going to be goals. Uh, the, num the number is going to be one. The question response is going to be Okay, so it looks like I've got some cleanup work for some labeling. So let's see. Step one input goals. Those ones all got updated. Step three input pages. Step four input. special elements, and step five. Dopamine. Again, why dopamine? Because you've given yourself, you've given yourself the things that you're uncertain about and you've planned it out so that you can actually come back and nail those things because you didn't know what you were doing when you started this process, but now you do, and when you come back and finish it, you're gonna feel amazing. Okay, so let me head, up, head back over here. So I want input uh, step one goals value, and then that's good. So I'm just gonna build my workflows from here. So button step two. So that way I don't have to go back and then come back over, if that makes sense, right? So now we have, uh, let's see. We know they are labeled input. And we have UI data. So we don't have a question response for this one, but rather we have uh, data. So user interface response list, add UI input one, it's value. And then user input response, add. Mm, that's not gonna be super much quicker, but. Okay, that's looking good. Next up, data. Gonna work through these, and then what is it? Uh, workflow. Whenever, at least this is again my perspective, but if I'm working on something where it's all the same things, where I keep the same thing in mind every time, so now I'm looking for data. I always try and do that as my thing for how to picking, rather than going what I did for the user inter interface one. I found that to be more difficult. Okay, so this one, 
So now it's, oops. All right, so cool. So that one is set. And oh yeah, this is number th two. And this, the name of this one is Specificity. All right, I'm gonna copy this one and paste it since this one, next one's gonna be easier, three. So this is three, this is pages. And this is step, step three. And step four, and this is, is a huge, um, is there something after that? No, okay, looks interesting. A uh, huge shout out for naming things well because it makes it super easy as you can see here. So learning some best practices, it's amazing. Step five. Oh yeah, we forgot to update these. Four, and what is this one called? Special elements. Okay, cool, so we've got those set up. So now we should see that, uh, and then we're gonna update the current user. What we're gonna do for the current user is there, let's see, question, we're going to add the result to step one. Add the result of step one. Okay, so now the user is going to have all those things tied to them. So that's amazing. Uh, which means, like over here in a world of data, we have a list of all this stuff, state variable, which uh, we we punted on that one, or I punted on that one. Change screens, save the data, so I did that. Uh, not doing a plus button, display the data at the end. Well, that's not really a workflow. Maybe, let's see what happens. So when this one is clicked, let's go to this panel checklist and let's make it type question. And let's see, I think what we want to do, um, for let's see, Okay, so I wanna pass the data to this. So I'm gonna have this be question. Yep, so I could have done that one. Could have set that up before for the user interface. So that's something always good to note. I suppose when you're copying things is think about the data that's tied to them. But luckily it's not too many. Oh, and this other five question thing is a option set from testing some things out. But so then on this workflow, what we want to do is we want to display some data. And let's see these groups. Okay, so we got to get some labeling going on here. Uh, 
and then workflows. All right, so we want to display data into Let's see, GUI, no, there we go. And the data that display is okay. So we're actually going to do this. Oh, so our checklist actually, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, let's see, the checklist is here. And then the things that I want to actually say about it is I want to, um, add more to this interface, complete these and you'll be done. Here's your checklist. Here's your overarching goals. Here's the pages you're working on, the special elements that you said, and the dopamine giver, and maybe like a full screen button that would hide this or something like that, and then it just becomes something once in the middle. Um, but so it looks like it's actually gonna be over here on this, this step. We're gonna go and display data. Uh, okay, okay, I see what we're doing now. We're going to display it in the panel checklist. And then we'll have to go and do parent group. So here we're going to get this one a question. This one's got to be question. and this one. And again, amazing work for making it this far. All right, so next up, let's get the data displayed over into this panel checklist. So element actions, display data, panel checklist, results of step one. So all of this data is now pushed over into this group, and then we can just access it here by, for each of these, saying parent group, parent group, and so on. Amazing. All right. Let's go, and so we're running this as, a as this test user. And if we look at our database, our app data for questions is empty. So let's go now. And rather than if I was typing this, I was typing this just on a text editor. And obviously, welcome to do that. That's a great way to do it. Um, but there's a link in the description below where you could go and actually use this tool. So let's see, I did not set up the workflows though to, to uh, navigate. So I'm just gonna copy this one. Paste. And then this, so this will go to step two. But I also want to set a state for step one the value complete is yes. So let's see, I'm gonna take all of these, bring them on to these quick. So I guess you could say my approach to when you have to repeat things, my approach is take one thing and then repeat it out rather than taking multiple things and doing them all uh, one at a time. 
I think that that is in line. I'm just kind of thinking through this out loud. But I think that is in line with um, the assembly line process. Because the assembly line, because it used to be like someone, if you assembled, this is not true for a car, but like, because uh, the cars were the first ones, right, to get the assembly lines, or, or at least was made it made it popular. Ah, uh, you know what? When we do step two, we got to go step three. That's what it was. I knew I was missing something. Um, but like a horse and buggy or someone like, or like a full suit of armor way back in the day. Uh, rather than just someone making just the breastplate over and over and over again, which I'm sure that happened to some extent, but people would make the whole darn thing. Uh one at a time, like one full suit of armor at a time, one full car at a time. That's a better example. But if you were to sit there and build a whole car, car at a time, it's just less efficient. And so I think that would be like, if you were to go here, this is the car, and then you do all the things to it, and then you go to the next one, you do all the things to it, and you go to the next one, you do all the things to it. It's too much brain task switching. Whereas if you are here, and so now we're working on, we did the go index on all of them. So it's the same task across a, re a repeated number of things. So same task. So now we're gonna paste in, paste in, paste in all the efficiencies today, uh, except, for, except for that one. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, so then this would be group two, group three, group four, and group five. Boom. Chilling and programming. All right. So that should do it. We should have a working model here. All right. So here we're going to run this uh, on slow. Actually, we're going to run this step by step because it's the first time we ever run it. So we're going to say continue, please. So we're creating a new question. The question gets this response. We make changes to the user. And the user gets this question added to their list. Uh, we go to the index page, which we're already on. We go to step two. We set the states. Oh, yeah, and because we came here. Okay, and then we look at that. We can see that that one turned kind of a... Uh, a mushy green color, which it looks like we need it to be even mushier. However, that state just reset. So I think we want to tie that to the user record actually. So rather than a state that is group one complete, Let's go over to our data for the user. And actually, let's do this. Let's go and look if there's a, we don't even need to have any of these states. We can actually delete, oh, we can delete all these. And then we'll just delete out those workflows. And that'll show you in a second, because basically we can just look if there's a value there. If there's a value for question one, then it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's been done. So when we look at the user's record here, we're looking at the wrong thing. We wanna, we wanna look at the current user's um, questions and we want to look at each item's well let's see yeah so if its count is greater than or equal to one of the number of questions it's answered. 
then we'll turn the icon color that mushy green Hard to tell what it should be. So, Alright, so then let's go with this one here. And then when it's two or more. So we're going to go with that. To update that. That doesn't update it very much. <laughs> oh, again, anyone who's uh, made it this far, you're amazing. Congratulations on learning so much about Bubble. So we should see here that the count is definitely not four, so the condition is not true, so it's not going to update. Well, and actually this checklist one, whatever. Okay, so if I were to if I were to build Okay, so it seems as I should prime this with if I were to build, update, etc. But I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to fill these in. Then we're going to watch this step by step. Build the input screens. Build an output check, this thing. And this thing. Okay, so let's see. I don't think we actually... Yep, I didn't do these ones. So here we're going to create a thing which one is step two continue got it got it got it So this one's slightly different. So create a new question. And we're working on the UI. And so it's going to have those. And then we are also going to hide whatever this is called. G user interface fill in the blank. G user interface fill in the blanks. Cool. And then, so we'll have to update those other ones. For the button submit data, we'll make changes to a thing. And the thing we're changing is the current users Oh no, the thing we're changing he is, a, is, a, is a question. Do 
do a search for a question where the number equals 2 and you know what we didn't do did we over on the user record yeah they have a list of questions so search for questions where the unique ID is in the current users questions each item's unique ID. And it's returning a list of one, so we'll take the first item of that. So we've gone and we found this question. Now that we have this question, let's change some fields to it. We'll change its data response list. So I hope that's clear. Uh, if it's not, go ahead and rewind again and take a look. And the key would be to ask what these two conditional are doing here as we go and search for questions because there's only going to be one question that has the number two its number is equal to number two and its unique ID is in the unique ID list of the current users questions it's because so it looks through each of those and it's like is it this one is it this one is it this one and obviously the unique ID five of them five questions with unique IDs will be in five the five slots for this but we, then we filter it down to only this one, if that makes sense. So we're looking for data, that one. Okay, and then we're also going to do an LM in actions to hide the something about fill in the blanks, data fill in the blanks. All right. So what that should do is that we filled this in and hit submit. The, this goes away and it gets stored in the database. This hides, it goes away and gets stored in the database. Then we're left to be here with these flows and stuff. And we actually want to copy this one. And then rather than create a new question. Okay, so we actually, we want to make sure that before we do that, on the submit UI, we create a new question. And then we'll paste that in. And we want the result of step one. So now this question exists on the user's record. So that actually when we go and make this look up here and make this comparison, the unique ID is in the current user's list questions. That question makes it in there because of this workflow, if that makes sense. So now on this data one, this make changes to a question. Let's copy that one because this one has this nice lookup already built for us. So we'll start with this nice lookup. So we'll paste that in. And then rather than these three, we want the workflow response ones. So workflow response, workflow response. And then We want workflow FIB. Did we get the FIBs on this one too? Yeah, FIB. Fill in the blanks. So workflow FIB. Workflow FIB. Workflow FIB. And as you can tell, with all of the data and all the user interface work and all of tying all of this together, how helpful it is to have a template to work from where you can refer back so you know, pardon my French, what the F is going on. Because, you know, um, for those who are newer to Bubble, if you've not built a full app before, or if you've not even built a full page like this before where everything is interacting, um, again, it's the type of thing that you can do in an afternoon, and it's really powerful and it's really amazing. Uh, but like any practice that you would put in or, and drill yourself for uh, tennis drills, like for serving, or um, if it's a musical instrument and you're playing your scales or whatever, 
Uh, it's very similar to that in Bubble. So if you are watching this video, A, it's amazing you made it this far, but B, um, know that like take this learning of Bubble very similar to how you would take the learning of a musical instrument or getting better at a sport, um, right? Like if you're two or three weeks into playing guitar, you're very, very different than if you're two or three months and very, very different if you're two or three years. So give yourself, uh, give yourself time, give yourself a pat on the back, especially if you're at this early part of your bubble journey, because, um, you know, it, it does, it does take a little bit in terms of allowing these concepts to sink in, but it's the same as allowing chords on a guitar to sink in and, um, or chords on a piano or anything else. So, uh, just a little tip there. All right. So we've made the changes here because we've got a little bit of a more odd uh, interface that we're working with here. And so you can just see, why is it, Joe, that we have user interface data and workflows here as like these really, really called out things? And why do they get all this special stuff in the thing that you're making here? Well, it's because as you can see, we took a different route for the interface on this one. And like, it's literally like right there, uh, if you can see it see that, that our interface is different here. So our data is different and we're having to do some of this kind of special stuff where we're hiding this. So you can actually get a really great example of why it's so important to define what it is you're doing with your interfa interface, user interface, what you're doing with your data and what you're doing with your workflows, because literally the thing that you're doing is the thing you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, it's, it's just that I'm applying it to the, to this, to the process of, if that makes sense, whereas you just be applying it to, to um, your process. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and by your process, it's your user interface, your data and your um, workflows. So here we are, we are working on a workflow and it's a little bit different because like this workflow is different and these ones are the same, but it's different than this one because our UI is different. And then the amount of data, we have three inputs, actually we have nine, I suppose, for item number two, whereas we only had one input, like super easy peasy here for this one. Um, and it looks like we have to have an override there. So we'll get a different conditional so that it's bright green when, when we have it turned on there. Cool. Uh, alrighty, so let's wrap this one up. We've got this. So we don't actually need this because this gets, uh, this button three is the third button in this user interface. So in our workflows, when we're build it, getting the data built or data set up, we actually started the, the, item, the data for the item at this submit button rather than the continue button for all the other ones have this continue button, right? So I hope that's making sense. I hope these concepts are sinking in and you're finding it helpful, obviously. Uh, cool. So make changes to the current user. We do not need to do that. Display data. So actually what we will need to display is This one. So we need to display this question because this question number two here that we're working on editing here, we want that to get pushed over to this checklist so that all these tasks have these three, these three, and these three. But we built them one at a time. Uh, rather than all together before because we have three buttons in our user interface. So again, you can see, oh, because we have three buttons, our user interface is different. Therefore, our workflows are going to be different. Therefore, the data, I mean, it's the same data, right? It's just you're, we had that one panel where we built all of it. Uh, if I go back here, this panel where we built all of it, but we actually built it the same stuff, but just 
three at a time here, three at a time here. Well, these were the first ones, these were the second ones, and then these are the third ones. And then the thing that we're working with is this question, number two. And so the thing that we want to pass to this uh, display this data in the panel checklist is this question number two with all its associated data. And so let's go ahead and refresh this page. And, uh, you know, one thing that I can do here that I haven't done before is that this initial content is actually going to be, oh yeah, So let's see, current users, questions, item number one. Because this is the first question that gets stored, stored on here. So then we can say, go and get the response, question response. So check this out. So now, when we're on this one, if we're over here, but then we come back here, it's still filled in. So then on this, panel here. We can set this one up as question. Current users question uh, item number two. Uh, we'd have to get the parents group question for this one and there's three of these here so we'll just do that quickly. And what are we doing here? Well, we're making it so that when people come back to this same panel after they've left, so it's the parent group's questions, uh, not number, but so this one is what we're dealing with is the user interface response uh, item number one. So copy that expression. And then here, we have item number two. And uh, I'm actually not doing this the most efficient way because I should have waited until the end to come back and do this. So I think we'll do that for the next ones, but because I'm here and doing it, but because it's, it'd be good to get the, the momentum of having made it all the way through everything. But so now we've, we want the data response list. So that was user interface, data response. And again, super amazing for anyone hanging because this is a lot of uh, this is a lot of brain power to get yourself this far into this stuff, especially if you're tracking with all of these uh, things. So kudos, kudos to you. Um, all right, so we got two more of these, and it's going to be the power and magic of this is going to show up in one second because we're going to take a look at that. So, because now it's reading from the database, like it's gone and read that from the database. And, uh, but I never hit submit on this one. So what I had here was, if I were to build and build a left nav, and if I were to build the input screens, and if I were to build the output a checklist and, and this extra bonus here, okay, so we're going to watch this go step by step. So we're going to hit submit, create a new question, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So it hid the user interface part now. Isn't that amazing? Now, if we also go over here and check our database, uh, one, we can check this user and we can look for these questions. So nine, oh, this is, these are the questions as they're stored with their unique ID, 9200, 2850. So let's go look at our questions. And this one is probably gonna be, let's see, here's our 9200 and our 2850. 
and we can see that this uh, user interface response, these ones that I just inputted are there, so they're in this list of stuff, but we don't have any data responses. So let's go pop those in there. If I were to create the data to hold answers to the five questions, which this is an amazing, uh, this is an amazing thing, folks, if you're uh, seeing this. Uh, display them, that's not really, I guess, I mean, that's what you're gonna do with data, you're gonna display it. But how about a list, we'll call it this one. And so that's the list that you literally saw here. So this thing has kept us on track, so it's like I know what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And then, uh, a query string parameter, count the number of fill in the box boxes. Oh yeah, that's the one I didn't decided not to do because I'm just gonna leave it so people can use it with three, three of these to get your checklist. So we'll submit that one and then it goes away or it's hidden and then we can see that data just got pushed into here. So literally my task of, or the task that uh, in, this, in this tutorial here of creating data to hold the five questions and a list of data to hold the answers for like the super detailed one, which is uh, these, this list, this list, and then this workflow one that's coming up. That's uh, like you're literally seeing that on screen happen and uh, uh, hope it's all clicking. So workflows, save data to the database after it's inputted, which is, which is what we've done here with this continue button. And then change screens and we did that one right away, so we crushed that. Nice work. And then we <laughs> punted on the plus button, display data at the end. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, actually, so some of this data work here, this display data, I think it is important to note. It's kind of a user interface thing, but it's also a data thing. It's how they interact. And that is how they interact is, we'll show that after I hit continue here is that this user interface stuff, uh, and so we can see that stuff was saved here in the database, amazing. And we see that here on this record. But when I was taking the extra time here to pass this data to this user interface element, uh, that's what I mean by here, display data, because you gotta actually just take the step and like be like, hey, user interface element, we're working with these questions. I mean, you might be working with cars or, or uh, have a, you know, like uh, a rental platform for electric skateboards or something like that. And, uh, you know, that's your data type rather than questions, right? So cool. Um, next up, pages. Uh, the pages for this one is only one page. This page you see here in front of you, right? Like what is the page I'm working on? It's this page right here. Cool. Specialty elements. Any specialty elements? Uh, the plus button to add things and then have the list of checked. Or yeah, have the have each checklist item be displayed in a repeating group. You can see how that is just a bit extra and it was a tough one and I wasn't able to crack it. However, I still feel really great about all of this stuff because look at these amazing uh, uh, things and the navigation, although we've got, looks like a slight bit of updating to make there. So final bonus, is there anything I'm uncertain about? Uh, I'm uncertain about the specifics when I, so I can even, I'm even writing this now to myself when I come back later on, I'm uncertain about the specifics when I come back and add and add the user interface of a plus button, how to keep track of checklist items uh, that will A, get stored in the database and B, get, 
So as I write things that I say, if I can articulate what I don't know, what I don't know how to do, that process of articulation oftentimes will lead you to an answer. And so uh, as I was writing this, so it's going to get stored in the database. So obviously, um, we've seen, we see what's the, what this looks like. We see these lists of things. So I suppose I don't need anything extra special other than to know that it would just get added on to the end in a workflow just like this. So I just add another one and it'd be, uh, I guess I would have like, rather than this, let's see, this is add input workflow one input value workflow. So here I have these values, but if it was a repeating group, it'd actually just be this value and then be the index of the cell. So I've literally just solved my problem, as you can see, by taking the time to do this. This is why it's the dopamine giver, because I didn't know what I was doing prior to writing this, and it helped me out. Now it just helped me out get clarity. Not only did it do that, but it also helped me, um, I mean, and that's what this, once I find that out, well, I come back here and note that down to close the loop so I can be sure I 100% crush this work session. So, I mean, this part is speaking more towards, um, and the languaging there is not perfect, but it's more reminding you to come back and like actually, you know, make your way through it and, and crush it. So that data will get stored in the database based on the index, index number of the repeating groups uh, cell. So that's cool. Um, it's like I had a fuzzy idea in my brain of how that would work, right? But I, it wasn't, it wasn't super clear. And that's that's the idea of this video is not only to teach you that you can have an idea of something that you want to build for an interface and just go and find it and follow it and then go over here to Bubble and just build it just like you're seeing done here live. But you can also, um, yeah, it, it's not just that you, you're seeing the clarity that you're getting by by being able to work with this this tool. So check below for the description for the link and uh, go and give it a try, give it a test spin, let me know how you like it. Uh, I'm so uncertain about the specifics when I came back and when I come back and add the user interface, how to keep track of the checklist items that will get stored in the database. Okay, I've got that now. And get displayed on the, okay, so what it would do then is over in the database, here I've stored three values. But if I stored seven in there, because somebody kept hitting a plus button to say, you know, to take take some counter thing up and give us seven of these, then what uh, what that would look like is that, oh, you know what, I'm going to have to uh, refresh here quick. But you can see, let's see, well, we can see here that these were are, are in there because I put them in there. If you recall that extra step that I said, I shouldn't be doing this now, but, but, uh, but here I am doing it or, you know, I should just get all this stuff done. But so I didn't do it with these ones yet, even though those values are in the database, they're not being displayed on the UI. So again, this super tied together, three-legged stool of user interface data and workflows, this is, um, this is what's up. So I'm over here on this dopamine giver, getting my dopamine and excitement about <laughs> accomplishing the tasks that I've set out, to, aimed to set out to, to accomplish. So get displayed on the, I'm uncertain about specifics when I come back. Get stored in the database and the index number, yep. So get displayed on the checklist UI, repeating group, based on the number of items in that list, whether the uh, UI list of items, data list of items, or workflow list of items. Those three, uh, these, these three on this add specificity one, panel number two. So check that stuff. Cool. 
All right, so uh, looks like I have some UI stuff to do then still, because here's our checklist. And that's a pretty amazing feeling to be this close. Uh, now what we want to do here is we want to get the question and it's current users question uh, item number three. I believe this is how we're doing it. We're just grabbing that item directly up. Item number two, item number three. Let's see, I'm gonna go straight into here with item number four. Item number five. Section item number two. Oh, and you know what? We can actually just get this current user's question item number two. We don't actually have to have this, this display data thing. Because this is that same thing, and this is an extra lookup where it's got to go out, it's got to look through that, it's got to look through all these unique IDs, et cetera, et cetera. So let's kill that. And so it's just this simple one. And then by the time we show up here, there's no look up here. It's just like, oh, what's the current user's thing? It's right there. It's just, you know, in plain sight, as it were, versus querying a database that could have potentially tons and tons of records in it. Uh, and then so we've got this question. So then what this one is, is the parent group's questions. We're at the user interface response list. And it's uh, item number one. And then so now you can see here, um, that we can just copy this here. Paste that for item number two. Paste that for item number three. and then do these last six. And literally folks, we will have crushed this project. Oh, that's number one. All in a, you know, a short few hours of building time. Granted, um, it helps if you Build your skill set in Bubble, practice, uh, follow tutorials, uh, challenge yourself to stretch your stretch yourself to do new things, uh, like like this or or you know, literally go out, go find a, a user interface of something, and then fill out this this thing, uh, fill out this Bubble pre worksheet thing. And then get yourself a checklist here and then work through those items for that checklist. Um, and then once you've done that, I'm, or obviously this video is for folks who, um, who as well, you know, you're already building stuff in bubble and, um, let's see. But there's all types of folks. There's folks who are already, you already have, um, you know, tasks lined up for this week that you're going to be working on in Bubble, or you're building your own thing and uh, you're kind of getting your your feet under you for for building Bubble. You know, go and do these things. If you did one of these uh, types of things, let's see, I'm I'm able to do this. Like I said, in a in a span of a few hours, this might take you two days the first time you do it, but then after you've done it, do another one. Do another one. By the time it's literally the same as sports or the same as music practice. If you played through a song one time, like you're super slow, like go to piano or go to guitar or whatever, or, or saxophone, you're like clunkily blopping around with the saxophone, right? Um, but if, but on like your 15th time through, you're pretty good. You're, and your 30th time through, you're, you've got it. You're, you've got it nailed. So this is no different than uh, this is no different than that. 
And uh, so the last thing that we need to do is nail this conditional down so that it overrides it. Uh, okay, so what we need here is this and get nav from page data URL nav is not step one. So this is one, one, one. Here we've got two, so we're just gonna paste this in. This is gonna be quicker. Two, two, and then this will be three. And so what we're doing here is we're basically, we're setting up this conditional that it's like, yeah, we can change it to this kind of, you know, blah, blah, green color or whatever, but only if it's not step three. If it is step three, then do this one. So hope that's clear. If it's not, take a close look at uh, at this logic of it. It's not step one, uh, meaning, or not step four rather, meaning it's step one, two, three, five or six, or five or checklist. But if it is, then we get the normal green. Oh yeah, and this is supposed to be checklist. Okay, cool. So our user here, oh, we can see, here's our amazing checklist. Amazing, even if it's these uh, kind of standard bubble things. So holy smokes, like that's pretty awesome. And then we can see this green be a little bit more green and uh, yeah, the, the, the only other thing to do is to build in something where you could add a plus button and have a repeating group where the, each of these gets, uh, you could have more than just the three here that's, that's statically inputted. You could have as many as you want. Um, if anyone, please comment below if you're interested in seeing that video. I will go ahead and record that um, probably on a different day. Uh, and and then set it up so that the checklist has this and then there's there needs to be some user management to this right because um right now the it's tied to a user record so someone could go in here and they could type in their session goals and uh you know do do some stuff here but let's see oh yeah we want to go we never made it one last thing there's always one right uh, for this appearance, we want to check this panel one and grab that thing so we can paste this. Question, let's see. Yep, that's what we want. We want the question response there. Same for this one. And same for this one. So now, because uh, we have a user management thing set up here, we can see we can see that fill in. Took a second, depending on your internet speed. Oh, I forget what I put in for uh, special elements. Well, I suppose, yeah, so anyways, you get the point. That's uh, that's what I, what I started with at the beginning of this uh, tutorial series was just a simple text list of questions that someone could use to uh, prep their time that you could use to prep your time before you jump into working on Bubble. But now, um, because the, the, the meta of this, the project was to build this checklist over in Bubble here with this UI I found just by searching uh, Dribble, 
um, for an onboarding UI. I just searched onboarding and found this one or forms or something like that. And let's see, let's go ahead and give this a margin right of 20 here. Shoot, let's give it a right of 460. I suppose that should be all of these then. They should all get that. So if, rather than do that, let me go here and get the padding on this one. Cool. So that should align nicely. Awesome. Amazing work. Thank you for hanging in if you made it this far. If you did make this far, check out the course library on nocodeacademy.co where I've got course subscriptions. We have uh, an API library that can help you get into APIs much faster than if you uh, were trying to do it just on your own reading the documentation. It'll enlighten you step-by-step step of setting up a new API for some really popular ones like Spotify, YouTube, Coin Ranking, um, a number of other ones, Podcast One. And... Um, Check that out. There's also full app builds on there that are that are quite extensive. Uh, messaging features, notification features, um, uh, extra, uh, how to save things to a favorite list, uh, and tons and tons more. Um, setting up Stripe uh, subscription payments. Um, check it out there, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give this video a like, and thanks for watching.